So Git and GitHub. So in Notion, off of the course hub, what you're going to want to do, swing into the David calendar, and then find our next activity in here. That is going to be intro to Git and GitHub workflow. And uh, as part of this lecture, uh, what we are going to cover is what a version control system is. Uh, we're going to be able to describe the difference between Git and GitHub and distinguish between local and remote repositories. So this is a great instance of uh, something I kind of want to circle back uh, and kind of talk about as we move through lectures. These learning objectives are kind of where you should be at the end of a lecture, right? Notice how there's nothing in here about like, hey, students should be able to be like a master of Git and should understand how Git works from beginning to end and knows all of the things and all of the commands like the the kind of what I want you to be able to do at the end of this lecture is has a fairly kind of narrow scope. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't want you going into lecture and thinking like, at the end of this lecture, I'm going to know everything that was in the lecture. Um, no, that's wild and ridiculous. And no one, no one is going to be able to do that uh, with every lecture consistently. Uh, these learning objectives are kind of the goalposts that you should be making for yourself uh, as you're going through and learning this stuff. Uh, so, in here, again, note that out of this lecture, what I want you to be able to concretely walk away with are being able to describe the difference between Git and GitHub, tell me what a local and a remote repository is, and describe what version control is. That's basically it. There's a lot of other information that is in this lecture. Uh, but that's stuff that will come to you as you kind of get more practice with it and as you begin to understand it. Uh, a lot of what we're doing in this lecture is talking about kind of the different things that you're going to encounter as you're working with Git and GitHub. It's kind of giving you an overall view of, hey, these are all the things that exist uh, that you're going to be using at a fairly regular basis. Um but I don't necessarily want you to feel like you're going to be able to, you know, know when to run git commit dash m commit message um, off of just this lecture. A lot of this is going to come with practice. It's going to come with repetition. And that's how most of the lectures are is, you know, now I've told you about how to do this. Now go and get some practice and repetition in on your own. So. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to talk about, uh, Git and GitHub. And, uh, a lot of this has to start with the conversation of why should you care about what, uh, Git and GitHub are. And to understand why you should care, we should really kind of talk about kind of what this is, right? Uh, so, uh, Git is a version control system. It is designed for tracking changes that are made to a uh, to a project through time. It allows us as developers to collaborate with one another, uh, to manage our code through time, and also to work independently of one another as well. Uh, so how you're going to be using Git, at least for the first couple of units, is basically going to be solo. You aren't going to have to worry about the entire kind of collaboration side of this. You're just going to get a lot of practice utilizing Git to uh, be able to work effectively on a project. Then later on in the course, we're going to bring in some collaboration aspects of this. And we're going to ask you to kind of work together to uh, kind of build out uh, projects using Git. So essentially with Git, what you're doing is tracking a project through time. Uh, probably the best kind of visualization that I can give you of this is going to be da, 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 da. So um, I hope that this is good. We'll see in here. Perfect. Okay, cool. So um, this is kind of how you should think of Git, is going to be uh, this way that you are able to 
track what has happened in a project through time. So we can see here that on this project, this thing that you're actually going to be using tonight called iClick, um, I, we could come back and we could see all of the previous versions of this project through time. So we could see in here that I can go back all the way to the beginning of this project and see what this project looks like at this point in time. This is the contents of this project on August 9th, 2022. I can see exactly what code was added, what code was removed. I can see what was changed in this project from its very inception. And I can come in here and with these different commit points, I'm able to see what happened in this project. Don't worry about any of the code here. This is wildly out of scope, it does not matter. What you should be looking at here is, hey, this allows me to see what happened in the code between the last time that this uh, file changed and now. That is what this is about. And we could see in here that you know, the history of this project goes back to last year. And we can, again, come in here and we can see all of the changes that were made to this code as part of this work. So this is really where um, this... Uh, this is where this GitHub workflow or Git workflow kind of comes into play. And you can see that I'm the only person that has worked on this project. And uh, I've, this is kind of a solo piece of work. This is uh, how a lot of your projects are going to look again for the first couple units. It's basically just going to be you working with Git. And again, the whole purpose behind all of this is to be able to kind of see who made changes to something, when those changes occurred, and what those changes are. That's really all that this Git stuff is about. This is also going to kind of allow you, whenever we bring GitHub into the mix, uh, is going to kind of give you a place where you're able to kind of back up your code as well. So say something catastrophic happens to your machine, well, that's okay because the code is saved up on GitHub as well. At least hopefully, as long as you are committing frequently, which you should be. Um, so again, that is going to kind of be how this works for the first couple of units. Again, later on, we'll talk about collaboration. I'm not even going to touch on that today. There is enough complexity here just working alone that uh, it is going to help us to kind of separate these out. So. That is Git. And again, the whole point of this is to be able to see who made changes, what those changes were, and when those changes were made. Uh, and that is going to help us collaborate with one another. So let's start with some vocab. So the most basic term that we're going to have to deal with Git is a Git repo. This can also be referred to as just a repo. Uh, and that is essentially a copy of your project. But that copy is what holds all of the information about the, you know, who made changes, what those changes were, and when those changes were made. And so a Git repo is allowing us to be able to find all of the past versions of code that we have seen in the past uh, and see who made changes to that project as it evolved. Uh, when they were made. Uh, so Git repos can be stored locally on a machine or it can be hosted on a remote server like GitHub. They're both going to be referred to uh, as Git repos, whether it is on github.com, whether it is on our local machine. So you can see here... Uh... Uh, I think I have this on, I do. So this code that I have here, this is inside of a Git repo. 
Uh, again, don't worry about this code. The code's kind of whatever. But this is a Git repo. We can see that by this kind of highlighting here that we have on the command line. It's a Git repo. And this is the same code. This is the, the kind of uh, points to the same code as we have up on github.com in this same project. So there's a repo on github.com that is associated with the repo that exists on my machine. They kind of have this connection to one another. So that's kind of the first fundamental building block is the idea that there is a Git repository at all. Uh, and inside of that Git repository is where Git tracks all of the changes through time. So a Git repository can hold different branches inside of it. We aren't really going to talk about branches too much, uh, especially at first. Branches are much more uh, going to be kind of a concept around uh, collaboration. Uh, but each branch that we have in a repository is going to kind of be its own little independent line of work. So again, a big part of uh, branches are collaboration. So we won't uh, need to really deal with those for a while. Uh, but note that right now, basically everything you are going to do is going to be on this main branch. And this main branch will be kind of what is called our source of truth in each one of our projects. This should also be kind of the default branch name uh, whenever you create a new Git repo on your machine. Again, for the first couple of units, this is the only branch that you're going to have to deal with. You'll just see main here and we won't have to like worry about what other branches exist, how to you know create them, how to manipulate them, how to do anything with them. You're just going to be working in what is called the main branch. Uh, you might see other organizations utilize the master branch here as well. Um, that is kind of the old default name. As time goes on, you're going to see more and more uh, kind of organizations switch over to this main branch name as their central source of truth. So what we have so far, a Git repo is just a place where we're tracking changes on code through time. And we have a branch. The only branch that we're going to use, at least for the first couple units, is going to be the main branch. It's the only branch you should really be concerned about at this point. Cool. So we also have what are called remotes. This is the thing that makes a project, uh, a local repo connected to a repo up on GitHub is the remote. And a remote is just a reference to a repository hosted somewhere else. So you can see here, I'm going to do a command we'll talk about here in a little bit. If I do git remote dash V, you're going to see that this, this git repo that I have on my machine is linked to this URL that is up on GitHub. This is the thing that keeps our, uh, our, code kind of connected up to github.com. You'd see here, uh, at least if you have a larger screen, you can probably see, or it's very, very tiny, a smaller screen. This URL that is over here is this URL that is right here. On my machine, I have a thing pointing to this thing over in GitHub. So these repos are connected through this remote that I have here. So 
this is again the thing that kind of keeps us in sync and we can help uh kind of keep us in sync with what we have up on github.com cool so there's some just initial vocab for you. I know that that's a, a lot. And again, that's why I emphasized at the start of this, hey, this is, you know, not something I necessarily like. There's there's nothing on this calendar event that is like students will know what a Git branch is and how to use them. They're just like we're laying the groundwork for things that we're going to be approaching uh, repeatedly as we move through the course. So. That takes us into actual commands. This is the what of everything. Now we're going to see how we actually uh, utilize all of this. So how we utilize this are with these commands. And I'm actually going to, you know what? I'm going to go back to the drawers directory we had earlier. Uh, and cool. So we have drawers here from earlier. And what I'm going to do is initialize this repo or this uh, this directory as a repo with git init. And again, you could see through the rest of the lecture, there's a lot of these commands that are in here. But you'll see that in the content here, we have this kind of what it does and when and why to use it. We have that repeatedly for all of these. And again, you should use this lecture as kind of a library for you as you're working with Git. that You can return to and you can be like, uh, I'm not sure what to do next. What do I do next? I, I need to get a repo up on GitHub. How do I do that? Go through and follow uh, the lecture material here. And that will kind of help uh, guide you through how to do this. We also have a cheat sheet that is uh, at the bottom of this as well, that will kind of point you to as well. So we're going to start with git init. And whenever we run this, it initializes a new git repository. Um, before I do this, oh well, before I do this, I'm going to run an ls-a for you. We're going to see, look at everything in this directory. Uh, and then whenever I run this git init, you're going to see, hey, we initialized an empty Git repository in this directory, and you'll see initialized it in .git. So if I do another ls-a, look at that. I have a new directory that got made. You will not ever have to manipulate anything in this directory. You should not even need to go into it. Um, I highly recommend not touching it ever. Um, so it is just simply here that says, hey, this directory has been initialized as a Git repo. And you can see here that uh, if you're running omizosh, that the command line has changed. This has drawers and then after it, git colon main. And then your actual prompt is here. You'll also see this yellow X here as well. We'll talk about that uh, as we go through uh, some more content here. So we have initialized the drawers directory as a Git repo. We could see that here on our command line. And you would want to run this Git init command whenever you're starting a brand new project. And now, because this has been initialized as a Git repo, we are able to track uh, the changes to this directory through time. Uh, an important note here, make sure that you don't create a repo within an existing repo. Uh, that can cause problems. So make sure that if you see Git main here on the command line, that you are not making a new, uh, that you're not initializing a new Git repo. For example, if I run Git init here, that's bad. You don't want to do that. You should not be running Git init if you already have Git over here on your terminal. 
if you want to initialize this as a Git repo and you don't believe you should see this, then you'll need to kind of go up until you find where that Git repo is. Here we can see I've now left that repo because that Git main is no longer here. So I know that the repo that I created was in the drawers directory. If I do an ls-a, you could see there's my .git. So you want to make sure that you do not create nested repos. That will slow down your machine and will make it much harder to actually do real work. All right, uh, a couple questions, Callum. I have two. I think they're related. Uh, first is what is the DS store doing? And second is if I uh, initialized in the wrong uh, directory, do I? Is it as simple as deleting the .git file? Yes. Uh, second question first. Yes, you just delete the .git file. It removes the. Uh, it removes all of the Git information from that directory. So you can see here, if I run rm-rf.git, this is now no longer initialized as a Git repository. So it looks just like that. Great question. Uh, this will probably be one of the few instances where you will need to use that rm space dash rf command um, to be able to remove a Git directory like that. Um, so your first question about what this DS store is, this is a Mac specific thing. I think this is for, um, I think that's for thumbnails for, um, your file, uh, the files that are in a directory uh, not important though. Not something you'll need to know. Um, cool. All right. So. Uh, let me go ahead. I'm going to reinitialize this as a Git repo. Cool. So, um, uh, something that makes Git a little bit difficult, especially for kind of new learners, is that it uses a lot of really specific uh, terminology that is not really, doesn't have kind of a, analogous way to talk about it in real life. Um, that, that is honestly one of the hardest things about learning Git is it's just this kind of brand new thing that you have to learn uh, to be able to make work correctly. Uh, so that, that's going to be something that uh, is going to be a common hurdle for everyone uh, is that Git is just honestly kind of hard. Um, I think that there's a lot, a lot of the commands are a little bit obtuse. They aren't necessarily what you would think they would be. Um, and that's really another reason why, like, hey, after this lecture today, I don't necessarily want you to know everything that is in here. I want you to kind of be able to use this as a library and a resource for your own purposes as you're going through and actually using Git on your own. So uh, just kind of throwing that out there. Before we move into our next command, git add uh, and then dot. So whenever you run git add dot, what this is going to do is add all of the files and folders in the current directory to what is called the staging area, where they will be added to the next commit. So this git space add space dot, this is going to say, hey, all of the work that I currently have in the current directory, hey, that's where this dot is coming into play. This is the add the current directory to the Git repo. That's what this is saying. Use Git to add the current directory to this repo that I have here. To what is called the staging area. You want to use this command whenever you uh, have made changes to your code that you want to potentially eventually commit to a local repository or push to GitHub. So realistically, what most of you are going to do is run this command and then two other commands kind of in conjunction with one another. And we'll talk about those as we hit them. They're coming up next. Um, that is 
uh, really what this is going to kind of uh, be about. So this is taking your current work and putting it into that staging area. Think of the staging area as kind of a launch pad. Um, it is where, like, imagine you were launching a rocket into space. Doing get space, add space dot is going to take your code and put it up on the launch pad so that it's ready to go. You're not fully um, doing anything with it yet. You're just putting it out on the launch pad. That's a great way to kind of think about it uh, and what this staging area is. Um, the next command that you will typically run in conjunction with this git space add space dot is git space commit space dash m and then some commit message here. We'll talk about what a good commit message looks like here in a moment but this is what this command will look like. This command actually provides a checkpoint. And this is going to say, hey, whatever I've put into the staging area with git space add space dot, whatever I've put in that staging area, it is ready to go. This is like saying I'm ready to launch this essentially. Again, this kind of oversimplifies that Git workflow, but that is kind of what you can think of this as, is like, you know, you've you've gone through and you've made all of your checks and you're like, hey, what I have on the launch pad right now, I'm ready to launch that thing into space. And I want to remember this in the future. This is a monumentous occasion. I am committing code. So here... What would a good commit message be? Well, a commit message should be in the present tense and it should describe any changes that your code has made. And again, I'm kind of in this drawers directory right now. This is a little bit abstract. Um, I haven't written really any code. All I've done is create a few directories that have some files inside of them. Uh, but uh, a good commit message here might be something like, uh, especially because this is my first commit, um, I'm initializing uh, initialize project. That might be a good commit message here. But your commit messages should always be in the present tense and should describe any changes that the code has made. Again, I don't have any code here, um, so this is a decent commit message for what I have here so far. I'm just starting this project up. I'm going to be storing some things in some drawers. Uh, Musto, question. Um, so when adding something to the staging area, let's say you change your mind about it, how would you remove mm -hmm. it from there? Uh, so whenever something is in the staging area, all you would do is make changes to the code and then run that git add command again. That is going to change what is in your staging mm -hmm. area. So, uh, for example, here, let's say I delete this, uh, what do I have in here? Say I delete the more PJs. Right now, more PJs is in the staging area. I just ran this git add. These three directories, they're all in that staging area. So if I do this rm more-pjs, am I going to be able to do that? Nope, rm-rf. Now, it's gone from here, but it's still in the staging area. If I want to reset what is in that staging area, now I need to run that git add one more time. Now the staging area just has whatever the current contents of the directory are, which are socks and more socks. So then uh, if, if like, let's say I didn't want to technically delete that file permanently, would I then move the file first out of that directory and then um, do git add space and then bring it back or, or I guess more so I'm asking, like, how would I remove that without deleting it entirely? Um, if you didn't want to delete it entirely, um, uh, I, if you didn't want to delete it entirely, then like, what, what would you be wanting to do with it? I guess I, I, 
I was, I was just more so curious if there was a way to remove something from the staging area without deleting it. But uh, ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. The staging area is really just going to be the place where whatever whatever your directory looked like whenever you ran this command. That yeah. is what this is. That's what your staging area is going to look like. Is okay. gotcha. whatever the result of whatever is in the current directory. That is what is going to go into the staging area. Gotcha. Thank you. You can think of it kind of like a snapshot. At that moment, this is what it looks like. And okay. then after you're done with that, then, oh, wait a minute, I made some changes. Now I'm going to take another snapshot. This is where it presents, presently looks like. So thank you for that analogy. Yep, yeah, it's perfect. Cool. So um, now, again, I'm ready to commit the changes that I have made here. And I'm ready to, again, kind of, take a snapshot of what has happened uh, in my staging area uh, so that I can remember it later. Uh, so whenever you're making a commit, that is what each one of these kind of points in history are. So each one of these items that you see in here, these are going to be kind of snapshots of what was in the staging area at any given point in time. So here, if I click into this specific commit, then this reflects all of the changes that were made in this code at this point in time. And that's what your commits are doing. Your commits are what are actually uh, remembered in the future. Your staging area goes away. It, it's, you know, you'll eventually launch the rocket, right? Um, so your commits though are kind of a snapshot of everything in that point in time, whatever was in that staging area. So that, again, is git commit dash m, and then whatever your commit message is in present tense. So I'm going to say initialize project. And now I've made a commit. You'll see here, after I made this commit, this little yellow X went away. This yellow X indicates that there were changes between the last commit that you made. In this case, there was never a commit on any of this. So that yellow X was there, but it's indicating a change between the last commit that was made and now. So for example, say I come in here, you'll see if I hit enter a few times, I don't have a yellow X, but say I touch a, um, a I don't know, a, a sad drawer. Uh, .js, perfect. You'll see that after I do that, hey, now we suddenly have a change. Now there was a change in this project that has not been committed yet. Therefore, we have this yellow X. So if you see this yellow X in your terminal, this means that, hey, you have changes you haven't committed yet. So to be able to make a new commit, if I wanted to add uh, this sad drawer file that we just created, uh, what I could do is go through this process again, the git space add space dot, and now git commit dash M. And I might have something in here like add sad drawer. Again, this describes the change that was made in this code between the last time I made a commit and the present time. And you can see after I make that commit again, that yellow X is gone. Indicating that the code that I have written here has all been committed. Cool. So uh, committing your code, again, to use this kind of rocket launch analogy, is set, just says everything is good for launch and we want to remember this point in time. I might want to come back here and reminisce again in the future. Cool. Any questions about this? Uh, yeah, Callum. Should you like think of these as going hand in hand? Like every time you add, you should commit by rule 
or would you want to add a bunch and then commit? That's a great question. And one I, that you're going to kind of, um, uh, that was going to get to that, but the git add, git commit, and then another command that you're going to be using here to interact with GitHub, git push, you're almost always going to run those three commands immediately uh, next to one another in conjunction. You're most always going to want to, we call it add, commit, and push whenever you're uh, trying to make changes to your code or after you've made changes that you want to actually commit. You're almost always going to run git add, git commit, and git push in conjunction with one another so that the code that you have is committed on your local machine and then also sent up to github.com. Great question. Uh, Steven. Sorry if this is a silly question, but what are we committing to exactly? Mm. Great question. So right now, we have, are really not committing to anything except this local repo. Everything that we're doing right now at this point in time is happening locally. Uh, so this is happening on our local machines, but nowhere else. We're not able to like go anywhere on the internet and see any of this code. Uh, we haven't done anything that is going to be visible anywhere outside of my local machine. So everything that we've done so far is local to what we are doing. Great question. Um, one quick thing before we do actually uh, add in another location into our mix here, uh, we have git status. Git status just tells us what is happening at any given point in time uh, with a repo. So if I run git status right now, we can see I'm on the main branch. There is nothing to commit. If I run git add, right now and git commit, there's no changes that have been made. We're going to get a message. Hey, you have nothing to commit. So if I try to run this git commit, it's going to be like, hey, you haven't changed anything. Uh, so that's uh, a good thing to keep note of as you're going through this. Say we do make a change though. Uh, so say I touch a happy drawer. Now we could see, hey, look, there's our yellow X again. If I run get status, hey, look at that. We have what is called an untracked file. So, what I can do and Git is telling me this, nothing is added to the commit, but there are untracked files present. I can use git add to track those files. Let's do that. If I do git add dot, and now I run git status again, hey, look at that. I have changes to be committed. The next time I run a commit, it's going to add in this new file. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to do a git commit dash M, uh, add happy drawer. Cool, perfect. Now, if I run git status again, what we're going to see is that there's nothing to commit because I've already committed all of the changes that I just made here. So git status is really good for being able to just determine really, really quickly what is happening in a given repo at a given point in time. Cool. So um, let's go ahead. We're going to add GitHub into the mix. But before that, I'm going to let you all take a quick break. Um, let's do 11 minutes. We'll come back at 15 after, uh, and then we'll add in GitHub. Uh, yes, Ashlyn. Um, could you scroll up on your terminal a little bit? Absolutely. What was the very first um, command you did with git? Uh, the very first git command that I ran was git init. Uh, so you can see that right here. That is what turned this into a git repository. And then how do you get back out of git? 
Um, so whenever you are in a Git repository, this is always going to be visible. So because we've turned drawers and uh, all of its children uh, kind of files and directories are now held inside of this Git repository, um, if I wanted to leave it, I would have to go above it. So that drawers directory again is uh, that Git repo. Uh, but whenever I run that CD dot dot, now I'm back in my home directory and I, uh, I, you can see that there is no Git main here anymore because this, my home directory is not a Git repository and it should not be a Git repository. I think we lost her, David. Oh no. She just dropped. Oh no. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, Nick, what was your question? Uh, so just to clarify real quick, you may have mentioned this. Um, uh, are we supposed to be, I mean, you don't want us to be following along doing this yeah, unless it's, you're totally uh, right. you, you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, for, for now, I would definitely just kind of like sit back and watch and take this in. There's no need to like follow along with what I'm doing here for sure. Tim four. Thank you. Of course. Great question. Take a break, David. Dan, you have a question? So um, just, just to continue on what we were talking about. Um, so we left the Git and went back, but uh, we lost the screen, but um, would would that Git show up under lists if you were to do LS in order to find the Git? Or how would you like, would are we gonna be seeing how to get back into that Git once, um, cause I know we knew we do get it. Sorry, go ahead. When Whenever you move back into that directory, it will always be there in that directory. So okay. once you CD back into the drawers, you're going to see that Git, um, that uh, little statement saying that you're in the main branch of Git. That's always going to come up whenever you CD back into that particular file. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? All right. Enjoy your breaks.
All right, come back, everybody. All right, so we are going to continue where we left off by throwing GitHub into the mix. Uh, so right now, all we've done is work locally. Uh, we've taken changes out of our working directory where we're currently doing things uh, in our project, moving them into the staging area, and then committing them into our local repo so that we can recall them uh, later if we need. What we're going to do next is add in kind of these new remote actions into the mix, things that will allow us to interact with other Git repos that happen to be held elsewhere on other machines. Uh, in this case, what we're going to be using for remote for the entire course is going to be GitHub. Uh, GitHub is a social network that is essentially built around Git. Uh, and it has really kind of changed the way that uh, coding works uh, and allows us to be able to collaborate much, much, much more easier, uh, much more easily than we have been able to in the past. So um, GitHub is really going to also play a role as a backup system that happens to be up in the cloud. Uh, so again, kind of our scenario that we talked through earlier, say we spill water all over our laptop and it dies and we're sad. At least we haven't lost our project that we've been working on all week that is due tomorrow. Uh, at least I can go to the store and I can, you know, make a very sad, sad, expensive purchase. Uh, but at least my work will not be gone. At least I haven't lost all of that time that I've poured into a big project, right? Uh, so that is another role that GitHub plays for us. So Git and GitHub, they are different things, but they work together with one another to be able to uh, allow us as developers to work uh, more effectively than without uh, either one of these tools. So, um, cool. Um, what we're going to do next is actually push code up uh, to GitHub. So what I'm going to do, just like I came onto my machine and I made a uh, Git repo using that git init command, uh, I can actually go up on GitHub and I can do similar work here. So what I can do is uh, click on this little plus button up here and I can create a new repository. This is the same thing as kind of going onto my machine and running git init, um, except up on GitHub, this is clearly like not a computer that I have access to like I do on my local machine. Uh, all I want to do here is provide a repository name. Um, this repository name, I'm going to call it drawers because that's the directory I'm working in on my local machine. Uh, again, this was kind of brought up on break, but for anyone that happened to miss it, um, if the um, don't feel like you need to follow along with what I'm doing here uh, with like the kind of commands that I'm putting in and the actions I'm taking up on here on GitHub, this is really just kind of a demonstration. You'll get lots of repetition doing this on your own and we'll have kind of more step-by-step -step instructions as you're going through and tackling those two. So, uh, in here, your repository name, uh, it is going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this same drawers example that I have here. And I'm going to go ahead and make this public and let's create this repo. Cool. So here I'm up on GitHub and this is the repo that I've created. And I can connect my local repo with this kind of remote repo that we have by copying this out of here, copying this uh, kind of uh, URL, copy that, 
and I'm going to run a new command over here. It's going to be kind of long. Uh, it's going to be git remote add, and then I'm going to call this origin. And then I'm going to paste this here. Paste the URL that I copied out of git. Again, there is a ton going on here this is in this command. Uh, this git remote add origin is uh, going to allow me to add in this new remote here as this name, origin. We'll kind of talk about the origins of this origin word here in a hot second. Uh, but this origin right now is just a way to talk about this URL without having to say this whole URL. So I'm going to go ahead, add this in. I've done this git remote add origin. And now to confirm that it was added, I can run a new command in here that is actually a little bit later on, this git remote dash V. This will just confirm that, hey, I have indeed hooked up my uh, local repo with this remote repo. So again, this will be kind of uh, in more step-by-step -step instructions later on if you want to follow this on your own on later projects. Uh, just giving you a quick little brief intro to how these things all connect to one another here. So we have this GitHub repo that is our origin. And what I can do now is actually send this code that I have committed on my local repo up to this remote repo that I have just added. I can do that using the git push command. And then after this, what I'm going to specify is where I'm trying to push to. Well, that is origin. I'm trying to push to origin, this GitHub repo that I just connected to. So I'm going to git push origin, and then I need to specify the branch name that I'm trying to push to. And that's going to be uh, main. So this, hello, this here, as I've written it, is going to push any code that I have committed to this URL on the main branch. Again, re recall, we're not going to need to deviate from main very often, and you'll almost always use this origin as well, at least in these first couple units. Origin indicates a thing that you control. So therefore, by pushing to origin here, we're saying, hey, I want to push to my GitHub repo. So let's go ahead and do this. Git push origin main. And now we can see that this action took place. This looks a little bit complicated, but... At the end of the day, what matters is down here, uh, we were writing objects and we're done. Everything got pushed up to GitHub and there is now at this location, a main branch. So if I go back over to github.com, I do a refresh here. Hey, look at that. This is all of the work that I've done on this project. I can go back and see the changes that were made through time. I can see, hey, this is where I initialized my project. And then I can come in and I can see, hey, cool, this is where I added a new file. The sad drawer. This is the add sad drawer commit. And then this next one is the add happy drawer commit, where I created the happy drawer file. I started this project 27 minutes ago, and then I made a commit adding the sad drawer 25 minutes ago, and then I added the happy drawer file 21 minutes ago. 
So this allows us to see how this project has evolved through time, the things that have changed as work has been done here, when those changes occurred and who made those changes. Any questions about kind of just the overall arcing flow here that we have so far? So this is going to be something that you are going to be able to repeat pretty much over and over and over. This kind of process, you know, let me go ahead and add, um, let me touch a new file in here. Uh, let's call this, uh, it'll be mid drawer or yeah, mid drawers. Why not? So I've got this mid drawers.js file. I'm going to uh, go ahead and add this to the staging area. I'm going to commit this. And then I'm going to push this to the origin main. This is really the git flow. These three commands here, git add, git commit, git push. These are going to be things that you can repeat over and over and over and over. That is what this is going to look like whenever you're working alone. You're going to make changes to your code. You're going to, whenever you're ready to put those up on GitHub, add, commit, and push. And then you're going to go back. You're going to make changes to code. You're going to add, commit, and push. You're going to go and you're going to make changes to code. Then you're going to add, commit, and push. So these three commands taken in conjunction with one another are super repeatable. You're going to be making these three commands over and over all the time. Highly recommend just writing this down somewhere. Somewhere where you can refer to it until you get really, really comfortable with this Git flow. Because at least, especially for the first couple of units, you're almost always going to run these three commands with one another. Cool. So we can see up on GitHub now, if I do a little refresh here, you're going to see that new commit that I just made one minute ago where I added in this new file, the midrawers.js. You can see back in my directory here, look at that, midrawers. So whenever I am going through and pushing code, that is what takes the changes that I have made locally and puts them up on GitHub. You'll see here, say I come in and add, let's do new drawers. And now what I'm going to do is add, uh, I'm going to commit, uh, let's do add new drawers. You'll see here that this change is not reflected on GitHub yet. If I refresh this page, there is no new drawers file. It is not until I actually go through and then do that push that this file that I've changed here that I've created is then sent to GitHub. There's the new drawers after I did that push. Uh, Chris, question. Yeah, just a quick question. So when, when anytime you push something to your own branch, it will automatically like update the files. Like if you're just updating a particular like JavaScript file, you don't have to like approve it or anything. It'll just automatically Correct. replace your old version with the new version. Okay. Yep, exactly. Yep. And that that old version that you had in here is always going to be visible to you. So you don't really like uh, when you're working alone, there's no real need to kind of go through a checklist process and be like, is this the code that I want to add to this? Like you've decided that already. Uh, so there's no need to like go through and make like pull requests or things like that. Whenever you're working and collaborating, yes, absolutely 100%. And we will cover that at some point. Uh, whenever, you know, after the first couple of units. Uh, but for now, whenever you're working alone, this is basically going to be the Git flow. 
Great question. Cool. Uh, any other questions about this process? I will say, uh, as we're going through and talking about this, it is possible to go and add things up on github.com. It is possible to come in here and add a readme. And I can say, hey, cool, this is the readme that I've created. Cool, now I have a readme file. Um, but we're going to see in here, um, I'm going to make one final drawers file and I'm going to add, and I'm going to commit. There's my final drawers. And now let's try pushing. And oh no, we have all kinds of problems. This error is because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This readme file that I created, this readme.md file, exists on github.com. But it doesn't exist here locally. If I do an ls, nope, no readme.md file. That is what this is telling me. These updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. You can see that this push failed. So until you are extremely, extremely comfortable with the Git workflow, you do not want to be creating, editing, doing any work with any files on github.com. You only want to be working locally. Say it again, super important. Do not do work up on github.com. You want to be doing work locally if you are not, that is when this process breaks apart. Uh, Steven, yes. If you uh, were in that situation, you would have to like re, re log the GitHub or like re, sorry, bring it back and like make remake the origin basically. Yeah, so what you would kind of do in this situation, there's a lot of different ways that you could handle this. Uh, the, again, the best way out of this is just to not edit things on GitHub to begin with. But say you're in this position and you are certain that the work that you have locally is the work that you want to keep. Now, this will erase any changes that you've made up on github.com, but what you can actually do is what is called a force push. Uh, so you can do this, add in this dash dash force here. And now anything that I have locally is going to be force pushed up to GitHub. And you're going to see that that is not necessarily what I wanted because my readme up here is now gone. And I lost all of the things that I may have done in that readme file. So something really important to kind of keep in mind as you're doing this work. Uh, uh, Honestly, again, just avoid editing on GitHub and you won't have any problems with this. Um, but if you do, you kind of have ways out of this such as force pushing, so. Cool. All right. Um, so that is how you, th this is the basic Git flow that you're going to be doing as you're doing work. Um, so a question that you might have as you're going through this and the might be, uh, kind of, uh, evident as you're going through, uh, this process is this make changes to code. Well, what changes should I be making between my commits? What should kind of be, uh, my impetus for creating a commit? Well, that's typically going to be whenever you've added some kind of feature or you fix something, uh, you have a kind of definitive checkpoint within your application that you were building. Uh, that is going to be kind of what is going to create the best commits is whenever you can come in here and you can say like, hey, I added a new feature that allows users to sign up to my site. That is a really, really concise uh, commit that you can make uh, that is going to be kind of a complete feature that you are uh, implementing into this application. 
So that's kind of when you should be making these commits is as you complete features. Uh, we'll kind of talk about this uh, a little bit more in depth as well uh, whenever you start using GitHub a little bit more uh, about kind of when you should be making commits uh, too. So we'll kind of come back and talk about the subject. Uh, forking. Uh, forking a repository is going to copy the entire contents of a repository to another GitHub account. This is going to be how you're going to do a lot of your labs. We'll talk about this a little bit more whenever we actually approach uh, that need. Uh, but eventually, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to add all of you over into our SEI remote uh, organization. And in this organization is where a lot of your different labs are. For example, let's say we're doing the JS Objects Lab. You can see that this has been forked 107 times, and you can fork your own copy to your account. So you will come in here and you'll click on this little fork button, and this will be how you start projects. Let's add that dash one back in, or start labs rather. So this, whenever I fork this, you could see that uh, that's not what I wanted at all. Hold on, I'll put this in my own account. Oh, it already exists. Let's do here. So, say I want to fork this uh, this lab over into my account. Well, this will do that, and now I have a JS object lab associated with my GitHub account that was forked from this repository. So what this is, is my own copy of this lab. So I own this copy and I can make any changes that I want to it. And it's not owned by this SEI remote organization. That's what a fork is. A fork is just your own copy of something that exists up on, re on GitHub. It's just like copying a file uh, from one place in your computer to another. You're just making a separate copy of it uh, that has kind of different permissions on it so that you're able to edit it. So again, uh, this can also be used as a verb. So we'll use this pretty frequently in labs. We'll say like, hey, go fork this repo. Uh, that will say, hey, Go to this repo and fork it to your own account that you've got. Cool. So next up is cloning. Cloning is the process of bringing down a, a GitHub repository, a Git repository on GitHub to your own local machine. So earlier I forked this JS objects lab if I wanted to bring this down to my own machine, what I can do is copy the URL to it. And then I can use this git clone command. Go ahead, let's go to my code directory at the very least. Um, the playground. So let me do git clone. And now with this JS objects lab that I'm pulling from this git repository, I now will have a JS objects lab directory inside of this playground. JS objects lab. So I can CD into JS objects lab. And now all of the files that are part of this project, again, that is this right here. This is all now down on my machine. And you'll see with this git remote dash V command, it has all of the uh, kind of connections back to my own GitHub account. And this repo in that GitHub account. So whenever we're cloning this down, we've retained the connection back to 
this initial uh, place where I got this from up on GitHub so I can continue to make changes to it. So these things that we've talked about today, these are going to be the kind of overarching GitHub actions that you're, Git and GitHub actions that you're going to be using over the next uh, at least couple of units. Whenever we uh, introduce collaboration, this will change up a little bit, but most of the concepts will still remain uh, the same. So again, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable with this right now. That's super, super normal. Um, you're going to actually get your hands on this and start doing this on your own uh, a, a lot. So uh, I kind of uh, will, uh, you know, emphasize again, uh, you know, use this kind of as a guide as you're navigating uh, what needs to happen with a Git repository at any given point in time. This kind of holds, uh, it's going to be a dictionary for you to kind of reference. All right. Um, let's see. That is most of what I want to cover here. Uh, I do want to point out this cheat sheet that we have. Uh, this is going to uh, really guide you through how to uh, go about uh, creating uh, some of these different actions. So like creating a new repository on GitHub how to do this stuff step by step. Say if this is a new directory on my machine, does this directory exist? Yes, navigate to it. No, create it. So here, if you follow this kind of step-by-step -step process, this will really guide you through um, getting all of this GitHub working uh, on your uh, whatever project that you're doing. So highly recommend referencing this. Again, this GitHub cheat sheet is available to you in uh, our course supplements, which lives off of the hub. So this will be kind of our first interaction with this. This is our GitHub cheat sheet. And again, this lives under your course supplements off of the hub. These course supplements are things that are generally just going to be referenced throughout a unit and that you should kind of keep handy. Uh, that's what this whole area is for. Again, because these processes, creating a new repository on GitHub, cloning an existing repository from GitHub, forking and cloning an existing repository from GitHub, these are going to be things that you do over and over and over. There's screenshots in here on how to do all of this. Uh, this is extremely step-by-step -step and will really, really help you out as you're kind of learning Git and GitHub. So highly recommend uh, keeping this handy. Uh, another fun notion feature that we can talk about here is favoriting. So here, if you're on this page and you want to keep it for later, uh, what you can do to actually pin it over to your sidebar is attach this little star to it. This will pin this page to your sidebar as a favorite so that you can refer to it later on really, really easily without having to dig for it at all. So again, that's this little star up here in the top right. Cool. Any last questions before we wrap up with GitHub? All right, so next up, what we're going to do